What's up, it's Layla. In this video, I wanna show you how easy it is to use the new Face Mojo iOS app. And so I just have it opened up right now. And so this is the first screen you'll see. And the first thing you'll wanna do before you start recording any facial mocap is uh, auto calibrate. And so if you look in the bottom center of the screen, you'll see the button down there. And so you'll just wanna rest your face and just have it in a neutral resting position and facing the camera or facing, uh, like if you're gonna be looking somewhere else while doing the recording, but you want the appearance of looking forward, like look at your other monitor or whatever you wanna be looking at and then tap the auto calibrate button. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, and so now you'll see that it's auto calibrated. And I had thought about creating profiles for, you know, maybe different users or something with auto calibration or saving it between sessions. But in my experience, it always seems best to auto calibrate at the beginning of every session um, because it'll kind of read your values a little bit different depending on the lighting and stuff. And so that's why there isn't any way to save any calibration options. Uh, so that was just something I kind of decided when developing the app. All right, and so now that we're all calibrated, we can decide if we want to record audio and record video. So if you look at to the left and right of the auto calibrate button, you'll see that there's the audio recording toggle button. Just looks like a little microphone. Green means it's gonna record the audio, so we can toggle it. Uh, now it would be off, now it's on, and same with the video. It's off right now. We can tap it, and turn it on. And then in the top right, you'll see there's like a face that looks like a dotted smiley face and that'll turn on or off the uh, mesh overlay. So right now it's off. If we turn it on, you'll see that you just kind of get a mesh overlay, which doesn't really do anything too fancy. It's just kind of a visual representation of how the AR kit is reading your face. And then it can be kind of nice just to kind of know that like it, it's detected you in the camera because if we kind of turn it away here, you'll see it kind of disappears. And if we turn back, it reappears again. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off though. And then next to that button in the center is uh, how you can change the take name if you want. So if we tap that, um, you can change the take name. I'm just gonna leave it the same and hit continue. And then in the top left, there's a options button. And so if we pull those up, um, the main thing we'll want to talk about here is the weighted moving average. And so what that does is it blends the latest reading of all the blend shapes with the last reading of the same blend shape. So what that means is let's say, you know, it started off at zero and then the next frame it recorded at, at 0.1. Well, the weighted moving average being at 0.8 we'll take 80% of that 0.1 and combine it into the zero. So instead of being at 0.1, it'd be at 0 0.08. And then what this can do is it can help smooth out any jitter. Um, and so it's just kind of a nice little smoothing feature to have here. And then, so if we went, took it to a value of one, it actually disables it because then you're getting 100% of the next value. And if we took it down to zero, which it won't actually let you, it would make it so your the facial expression on your character would never change. But I, I like 0.8, so I'm going to put it back. But you can you know pick whatever setting that you like. Oop, oop, I can get it there. All right, and then the export helper text file um, that'll just export an extra file that kind of tells you the uh, the raw data before it's calibrated and uh, you, um, adjusted with the weighted moving average, and then it. it so it's just kind of helpful for that. Otherwise, it's not really necessary. But I'm going to go ahead and turn this on so I can just show it to you guys. All right. So now I'm going to hit done. I think the other two things are pretty self-explanatory, the help and about. So I'm going to hit done and close this. Um, you could also drag it down on the screen to get rid of it. All right. And now I'll just kind of show you how we can record something. So we just hit the, you know, the red record button. And now it'll be recording, kind of clears off the other menu items to give you a clear screen. And so, yeah, it's recording right now. We're testing one, two, three, cool, cool, cool. And then if we hit stop, it automatically save that recording. And now if you wanna view your recordings and like see the actual data that is saved, we can go ahead and uh, minimize this and then go to the files app. And once it opens up, you'll usually, or at least for the first time, you'll be taken to a screen that looks like this. And then we just wanna select on my phone and then you'll see a folder for each of the apps. 
that have this uh, file sharing um, enabled. And so I just got Face Mojo, so I'll select Face Mojo. And now you'll see all the different takes. Um, so you can see we have the video here. I'm not gonna play it though. And then we have the JSON next to it. And just looks like a normal JSON file. It's just a array and a nested array basically. And then one of the questions I get asked a lot is how to transfer the uh, JSON file over to your computer. And so there's a few different ways you can do it. Uh, you can plug in your phone to your, your computer um, via USB. And if you're on a Mac, you can use the files app on your, on your Mac to, uh, to browse your phone files and then just transfer it over that way. Or if you're on Windows, you can use iTunes and do a very similar thing. Or if you don't want to do either go either of those routes, you can go ahead and just, just hold down your finger on the the uh, the take or the data that you want to transfer over, and then you can hit this menu will come up, and then you can hit share, and now you can either airdrop it to yourself or you can use mail to email it to yourself, and then if you have something like Dropbox or OneDrive installed, you can also upload it to one of them and then download it that way. Or if you'd prefer to use iCloud, um, for some reason it doesn't come up in that menu, but if you hold your finger down on the, the file again, and then you go to move, you can move it into your iCloud drive there. And um, and then, you know, you can log into your iCloud account on your PC and download it that way. And so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show that real quick. And then here's the actual helper text that just kind of explains the data and makes it a little bit easier to read. So. Uh, the first item is always the time in milliseconds. The next item is the head quaternion. Um, it's actually split into four parts. So it'd be the X, Y, Z, and then the real part of the uh, quaternion. And then you see the, the result after it's been calibrated right below it. And then the same thing with all the other 52 blend shapes. You have the, uh, the name of the blend shape and the raw value, and then you have the calibrated value right underneath it. And so it's just kind of easier if you're kind of curious or if you're trying to um, use the data in a different app, it just is kind of a reference for all that. And uh, so that's pretty much it. And that's, I try to make it as easy as possible to use. Uh, so hopefully I achieved that goal. And anyway, let me know what you think. And uh, if you have any feedback on the app in the comments below. Thanks for watching.